Welcome to the Governor Mario Cuomo Bridge Path. Yes, the Mario Cuomo Bridge, as it is now called, and for the last five and a half years. This actually isn't the first time, though, that this has happened where a governor's name was put in front of this bridge's name in particular. I don't know why it's happened before or why they do that, but we can get into that later. This structure connecting the western and eastern sides of the Hudson River was commonly known as the Tappan Zee Bridge when it opened on December 15th, 1955, up until 1994 when they actually implemented that first name change. And so the bridge still barred the Tappan Zee name, but now it was prefixed with Governor Malcolm's name beginning in 1994. Personally, as a 2000s baby, like literally born in the year 2000, I grew up calling it simply the Tappan Zee. Not all things need changing, but once plans to demolish and rebuild a new bridge began in 2011, the possibility of a name change, which is what we have today, came as well. Since it already happened, you know, in 1994 with Governor Malcolm, it's not an entire shock that the chance of history repeating itself would come to fruition. It had been decided in 2011 that the new design would be a twin span bridge, replacing the 54 year old constantly in a state of repairs over the water roadway. Just from looking at the photos of this bridge, I really do see how it's so much more contemporary than what a lot of bridges still look like across the United States. The Brooklyn Bridge is of course one of the most famous bridges, yet it still bears the character of the 1800s. And so because of this, because I'm so used to just always seeing an old rickety bridge, kind of like what the Tappan Zee Bridge was before, how it was starting to look. I was pretty fascinated with how this pathway actually turned out. Something cool I discovered when looking at the bridge's website is that they actually left space available to add a commuter rail if they ever chose to in the future. This would be really huge for commuters of the bridge who will now have the option to take public transport instead of having to drive. This is a case for commuters to New York City from Westchester County and Connecticut. There are most definitely commuters who opt to drive into the city and park on the street or in a garage, but most commuters take advantage of the ease of access of the Metro North train stations and the subway system. It's nice to have an alternative, especially for those who may be unable to drive for reasons such as age or disability. This bridge is stunning in every way, from clean lines to thoughtful architecture. You may or may not understand the $4.9 billion price tag, but either way, this bridge is taking note from other well-known bridges, like I mentioned the Brooklyn Bridge, even bridges like the Golden Gate, and for example, the walkway over the Hudson in Poughkeepsie and Highland, New York. Those bridges all feature a pathway that welcomes bikes and pedestrians, and that's the case now with the Mario Cuomo Bridge. While the pathway only exists on the upstate New York side of the bridge, so there's only obstructed views of the New York City skyline on this one, the views are still gorgeous nonetheless. It really is such a nice little gift that New York gave us when they were designing this bridge, because if there's one thing that anyone should know, or probably does already know about New Yorkers, it's that we tend to have a walking lifestyle. Whether you live in New York City, right in Manhattan, or if you live upstate, New Yorkers love to walk because it's just the way that New York was built. Even the faraway towns, such as Rhinebeck, still boast a beautiful town square where all of its residents can congregate, enjoy food, the arts, and nature all in one space. I love Rhinebeck because even though it is a town held together by long stretches of land and big farmhouses, that town square can entertain you car free for a solid day out on the town. And so for that, putting a pathway where walkers or runners or cyclists can go and take in the breathtaking views of the New York City skyline and of the Hudson River is something New Yorkers, I'm sure, have already been enjoying for the last two years and will continue to enjoy, especially as the spring comes and more and more people start to go outside. If you grew up in Westchester specifically, then you may or may not have been to Irvington, Terrytown, Sleepy Hollow, or any of those water towns, and you know how amazing it is to go all the way up to the rock's edges and get to see the beautiful Hudson River and everything that was born on its banks. The seagulls, the boats, the inviting houses, the luscious trees, or even the barren trees. It's the beauty of New York that maybe nowadays we seldom appreciate. So hopefully the pathway existing on this bridge will help shake off some of those COVID blues and bring people back outside. <laughs>